Have you considered moving to Reno, Nevada or possibly visiting the area, but the winter driving conditions or just the winter weather has you concerned? Well, in this video, I'm going to be giving you the average winter temperatures in the Reno area, the average snowfall, and some driving tips in the snowy and icy weather. I'm also going to be giving you some tips on some possible vehicles that you can get to help you out in the winter months. I'm originally from Hawaii and I lived there for 21 years and I've lived in Reno, Nevada for 11 years. And I really don't think the winter or the snow at all in Reno is really that bad. If you're new to the channel and you want to learn everything there is to know about Reno, Sparks, and Northern Nevada, please make sure this subscribe button and the notification bell. I get people just like you reaching out to me every single day through call, text, and email, and I absolutely love it. So if you're thinking of buying, selling, investing, or moving to Reno, Nevada, and you need some help, all my information will be down in the description below. I look forward to making the move to Reno or Northern Nevada as easy as possible. For you. So the first thing I want to go over are winter temperatures in Reno, Nevada. I would say the average Reno temperature during the daytime is probably between about 40 and 45 degrees. We can certainly get colder during the day and a bit warmer during the day as well. I think today alone was about 48 degrees, which I thought was on the warmer side and the sun was out. And we can definitely get to well below freezing every single night. So make sure to winterize your sprinkler system. So if you're coming from California, Hawaii, Arizona, or other areas that don't freeze in the winter, you're definitely going to want to have your sprinkler or your irrigation system winterized during the winter months. Also, if you're going on an extended vacation more than just one or two days away in the winter months, make sure to leave your thermostat on at about 60 to 65 degrees so your pipes in the house do not freeze. But we can definitely get cold fronts, blizzards, snow, and ice. This is for sure. I'm not going to lie about that. But I would say the last week or so, temperatures were in about the 40 to 45 range. I think about one to two weeks ago, we had lows of about 7 to 10 degrees at night with average temperatures during the day ranging from about 20 to 25 degrees. So that is definitely a possibility. But like I said, I would say the average Reno winter temperatures are between about 40 to 45 degrees during the day and definitely about 25 to 15 degrees at night during the winter months. So you're probably wondering about average snowfall in Reno, Nevada. And I would say the average snowfall in Reno, Nevada, besides last year, which was absolutely insane. I had a couple listings going at the time in my driveway as well and my rental and I was shoveling multiple times a week. It was absolutely awful but I would say an average Reno snowfall is about 19 to 20 inches and last year in 2023 I think it was the fifth highest record for Reno. I think it was between 47 and 50 inches so as you can see it was absolutely insane compared to our average snowfall of about 19 to 20 inches a year. If you're about moving to Reno, Nevada or possibly visiting the area and you've never driven in snow, ice or possibly blizzards or typical winter months, here are some winter driving tips. I would say the most important thing you could possibly do during winter months where there are snow, ice and possibly blizzards, easiest thing to do is slow down and give yourself more time to get to the destination. You'd be surprised at how many people I see from out of state, California, Hawaii, all sorts of different license plates absolutely zooming around at 40 to 55 degrees when there's ice on the road or possibly the freeway. It's absolutely insane. You can have the best winter tires and if you slam on your brakes going 40 or 55 degrees, when you are rolling on ice, you are still likely going to slip, lose traction, or possibly spin out. So like I said, the most important thing you could do, slow down and give yourself more time to get to the destination and also give yourself enough distance between you and the next car. So if you have to slow down or let your foot off the brake, and let your car roll and slow down itself, you're going to want to give yourself plenty of stopping distance. So should you possibly lose traction, I hope that never happens, but it definitely happens at times during snow and ice and winter driving in Reno. But like I said, give yourself plenty of time and plenty of room between the car in front of you. If you know you're coming up to a stoplight or possibly a stop on the freeway, start slowing down well in advance before getting to that vehicle. You'll be much happier that you did and your anxiety levels will be much lower lower. So the next winter driving tip is an absolute luxury as well and I completely understand that but if you can afford it I would definitely get winter or snow tires. I lived in Reno, Nevada for about 11 years and I got my first set last year. I think I have some Blizzax which are some pretty good winter tires but I would say it's an absolute game changer. I had to go drop off my four month old son to my in-laws the other day at about 7 45 or 8 a.m and we had a ton of snow the previous day and the roads at 8 a.m 
more sheer ice. It was absolutely crazy. And I'll be honest, I was a little worried, but I made it there to their house just fine. Didn't lose traction once. I definitely gave myself more time to get to their home. And I was driving about 10 to 15 miles an hour slower than I typically would. And I was giving myself a ton of room for stopping distance. This is very important. And this doesn't matter whether you have an all wheel drive, four wheel drive, or a two wheel drive vehicle. I think especially if you have a two wheel drive vehicle, having winter tires will be a huge help. But if you have an all wheel drive vehicle like myself, or even a four wheel drive vehicle in the winter months with snow tires, you're going to notice a huge difference. I absolutely love it. One of the other good parts about having a winter tire is that you can typically get two to four seasons out of them in the winter months, but you do need to make sure to swap them out in the springtime and put on some summer tires or possibly some good all season tires throughout the remainder of the year. Because if you ride snow or winter tires throughout the whole year, you're going to warm out really fast and then you're going to be buying another pair. And they're also not as efficient in the spring, summer, and fall months. They are specifically for snow and the winter months. Another important winter driving tip is to carry chains. And really, I haven't put chains on any vehicle living in Reno, Nevada in about 10 to 12 years. So you don't need them very often. But I'm also not a fan of driving over Mount Rose Highway or the Truckee Donner Pass. Whether I want to go to the Bay Area or not, I typically just avoid driving those areas in the winter times. And I would say even if you have some snow tires, they're not going to be typically studded snow tires. They're going to be unstudded tires. So even if the roads are fairly icy, you might not have a ton of traction. So I would just be better safe than sorry and get some snow chains. You can put them on typically right before you go over the pass and you can get them at most auto stores, but definitely check with your manufacturer because I have a Tesla and they say if I use chains that are not recommended by Tesla, that it could possibly void my warranty and Tesla chains actually only go on the rear tire. So keep that in mind. If you currently live in Reno or Northern Nevada, or you're thinking about visiting or moving to the area and you're coming in the winter months, this is an amazing website. This website is called nvroads.com, NV short for Nevada. And as you can see on the screen, it's absolutely awesome. You can see current road conditions with live webcams throughout the entire Reno Sparks area. But I would say most of them are going to be on the freeway. There's not going to be a lot of side streets. You might see a couple on McCarran or Rock, but I would say 99% of them are going to be on the freeways going north and south, 395 and I-80 east and west. But this is an absolutely amazing tool. And I sometimes check this website daily or hourly if it's currently snowing or maybe previously snowed, or I've heard that the roads are very icy. If I have to drive somewhere, whether it's to show some homes, I check this website out and I can figure out how much extra drive time that I need to get to my destination. Another tip you can also do is put in the address of your destination in Reno or Northern Nevada and Google will typically tell you if the roads are backed up. So your typical 25 minute drive, Google might actually tell you that there is traffic on the freeway due to snow or ice, as you can see as red or orange on the Google Maps and you can figure out your actual drive time. But like I said, I would always just give yourself an extra 15 to 30 minutes of drive time depending on the road conditions. And this is an absolutely amazing website to check out if you currently live in the Reno area or if you're just thinking about visiting Reno, Nevada. So you might have kids or grandkids and you're wondering how the Washoe County School District in the Reno area deals with winter delays or snow days. So you're going to want to get on the school's text or email alert system in regards to these delays or snow days. And this is going to be your fastest way to get these updates. The local news sites definitely give these alerts as well, but I would say the text and email alerts are going to be the fastest. So if the Washoe County School District notices that it's snowing quite a bit throughout the late evening and early morning hours, they might issue a two hour school delay because of the morning road conditions and the morning road commute is possibly hazardous. And they can certainly issue some very, very late. And I've heard this from many friends who have kids and they sometimes issue some very late snow days, sometimes anywhere from four to 5 a.m., which you can't really plan out your day. Sometimes they call a snow day the previous day, but it's typically not gonna be till the morning of. So you do have to keep that in mind as sometimes it can be a huge inconvenience. So you're probably wondering what an average Reno snowfall day looks like. In the first drone footage I'm gonna show you, we got about one to two inches or maybe even less in South Reno. But I would say we normally get a small dusting or maybe even an inch to two inches max on the valley floor, especially in the South Reno or Damani Ranch area that I live. So this clip I'm gonna be showing you is at about 11 a.m. And the next clip, as you can see, is about 24 hours later at the same time around 11 a.m. But there are some things I want you to consider 
I would say a typical Reno winter day, we might get one to two inches on the valley floor, if that, or maybe even just a light dusting. And by the next day, even if we get some snow from about 4 to 11 p.m., by the next day at about 11 to 12 noon, I would say most of the time the roads are fairly clear. So as long as you can avoid driving in the very early morning hours or very late evening or night hours, you're probably going to be okay most of the time. Not all the time, but I would say most of the time. And as you can see, just 24 hours later, at the same time around 11 a.m., the roads are fairly clear and it doesn't even look like it snowed that much. And the next clip I'm going to show you is about three to five days after the previous snow clip. And we actually got about seven to eight inches in South Reno, which is actually pretty crazy and uncommon for the area. But it was a nice welcome change because we definitely need the snow and we need the water to definitely get into the Truckee River from Tahoe so we can feed our Truckee Meadow water system. And here's the next clip about three days after, which we actually got quite a bit of snow, which I was really surprised about. We got about seven to eight inches in the South Reno area and many parts of Reno and Sparks got about seven to 10 inches. And if you're living in Somerset or Northwest Reno, where it's slightly higher elevation, I would imagine they got a couple more inches as well. But like I said, a normal Reno winter day, you're probably gonna get less than one to two inches or maybe a very light dusting at your house. And most of the time the roads are gonna be fairly clear by 11 a.m. or noon the next day. And sometimes by three to 5 p.m. on a normal winter day, the roads are gonna be completely clear and it might not even look like it snowed the previous day. I hope you enjoyed this video on some winter driving tips and what you can expect in the winter months in Reno, Nevada. If you're thinking about buying, selling, investing, or moving to Reno, Nevada, and you need some help, all my information will be down in the description below. I look forward to making the move to Reno, Nevada as easy as possible for you. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.